Hola, me hablos, me hablas, me senoras and me senoritas, and welcome to the 37th episode of the Train Sim New Show. This episode is different because I'm speaking to you currently from wherever the hell I am in Tierra del Fuego. I thought it would be a pretty good idea to run as far away as I possibly can on my two legs away from the British Isles, and Tierra del Fuego was the first place that came to my mind. And yeah, I've had to erect a minor setup. Um, the there's actually a tent behind the camera you can't see, along with my last remaining tin of pot noodle. Ugh. My assistant's doing fine, I'm doing fine, and my Vaporeon uh, is doing fine because it's raining and he loves the rain, don't you? Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, whilst I wait for my flight back to Cheltenham, Woking, uh, <laughs> let's talk about some news. Class 68 Enhancement Pack confirmed! Well, okay, a bit more than confirmed, it's released. I'm not the biggest fan of the Class 68, but I do like it more than other trains in the United Kingdom because it's rather mixed traffic, so it's got a lot of viability in trains in, as far as scenarios are concerned. Apparently it runs on this route called the Chilton Mainline. Cool, that's pretty cool. And the Armstrong Powerhouse have provided uh, five liveries which is actually all the liveries the Class 68 has been in. At least, um, to the date of me making this video. Who knows, maybe DB Cargo will buy one tomorrow. <laughs> I know I have a bit of a running gag regarding their liveries, but um, uh, there's only five. I'll give it a shot. Nah, it doesn't look that good. Okay, important thing aside then. What do I think of the back? Well, the sounds, once again, they're really, really good. I like them. There's a lot more attention to detail than before. The motors sound closer to the real thing. There's obviously been an overhaul with the throttle, the physics, and the braking. Yeah, I'm quite all right with it, honestly. There is one feature they've included that I want to focus on, and that's being able to adjust the amount of exhaust and the sound of the traction motors. They actually included this with the 31 enhancement pack, which didn't mention it because I don't care about the 31, I'm sorry. But it's nice that they've included it here as well. I like it, so now I can have the motors as loud as I want and the exhaust to acceptable standards. You know, not Volkswagen standards. <laughs> There is one stupid thing about this pack, however, worth mentioning. You can turn on the electric train supply. What's stupid about that? You could do that originally on the default. And that's right, but the Armstrong Powers have mapped it to Control S. You know what else Control S does? Take screenshots. Oh wow, fantastic. Conveniently enough, this was also the issue with the 31 enhancement pack, but I think it's even worse here because, well, Again, why would you make the same mistake like that twice? Of all the button combinations you can make to turn on the ECS, why not Control shift s or Control shift e or something like that? Or maybe no bind at all because you can just press the button in the cab right here. Honestly, and I know you can press F12 to take screenshots, but one, and that's not good future-proofing, because that's the Steam overlay as far as I'm concerned. There is a good chance in the future the game will, will you know, may not have Steam. How are you going to take pictures then? <laughs> the second thing is, it's a muscle memory thing. Whenever I'm playing the game and I want to get a good shot, I always instinctively press Control S, and it's awkward telling my my reflexes to use another method, especially in this case when it's due to incompetence. Because let's be honest here, it's not like the Arsenal Powerhouse are new at this sort of stuff. They've been playing the game longer than I have. Surely they know Control S is the screenshot bind. I know, let's not override that bind. But you know, that's pretty much it. 11.99, get it if you want, don't get it if you don't want it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, fictional reskins rejoice, fluttershyye.wmv. Alongside the 68 enhancement pack, uh, how can we not forget? Class 319 pack volume 2 confirmed. Well, not much confirmed, more so everybody knew it was coming. And isn't the Armstrong Powell so lovely to put deliveries that the majority of the people were looking forward to in the second volume instead of the first volume? Class act. Mind you, with more liveries, hopefully my running gag will work a lot better. Let's give it a shot. Nice! Now look at me and tell me you were expecting that song. Now originally I wasn't going to give the 319 pack volume 2 a full review because, 
Well, I've already given you my opinions on the 319 pack. But since we now have both, I had a change of mind and said, Alright, we'll give these a bit of a more in-depth review. Not sort of like 50 minutes dedicated to it, but enough to get my opinions out so you know if I could at least recommend it or not. Let's talk about attention to detail. The sound quality, modelling and texture quality is pretty good if you ask me. Weathering looks nice, the door sounds, the motors, even having the lovely Wabtec door sounds that everybody loves, isn't that right? They even modelled the different toilets as per the correct variant. So you have the standard, the semi-DDA compliant one in the variant 2s, and of course the PRM toilets in all the refurbished liveries. They have got the motor sounds and the run sounds to be pretty spot on to how they are in real life. So I won't throw any punches there, I like them. Feature wise, you get WSP, CSR, GSM, um, a passenger view, multiple different kinds of passenger views depending on the variants you have. Wow, call me impressed. <laughs> you can change the destination blinds, do I find that to be very, very, very tedious? I think I'll just stick to the um, numpad ones. I wish they still had that little note to the left or right hand side giving you all the combinations instead of me having to go into the manual. I liked having that in the class 321 and 456. Physics feel nice, uh, it reacts to neutral sections, you get a plethora of liveries and even little variants here or there. And they even simplified the auto numbering by just double clicking the MSO and setting it up from there. Very nice. I have noticed a, a tiny bit of lag when using the 319, or at least placing it in scenarios, but it wasn't major and it really only happens every once in a while because I don't use the 319 that often. Though that's not because I think it's a bad unit in train sim, oh not at all, it's just not one of my favourite trains. Plus the route that I have, although the 319 can run on it, uh, the, the turbo stars are a bit more... Um, frequent, let's just say it like that. There are other small features like isolating the traction interlock circuits, meaning that you can drive with the doors open, but that's just not a feature I typically use, but the option is there at least. I will also give the Armstrong Powerhouse credit, at least to the Volume 2 scenarios, for making them worth your time by adding small little features like the refurbishment at Brighton Station, as well as King's Cross Thameslink in their scenarios. Little things like that make me nod with a small smile. One criticism I do have is the DOO system, and this applies to both fat packs. You can have full DOO, which means you have to open and close the doors yourself. And by that I do mean you have to press certain combinations to open the doors. The problem with this, in my opinion, is simple. The Class 315 DOO is better, in my opinion. Because in that case, you have to press Z and C, and... I forgot what the right hand side uh, combination was, I think it was comma and question mark, but to me those button combinations are a lot more ergonomically chosen, whereas with the 319 you have to press T and... was it T and U and T and O to open the left and right doors respectively, and I just find that to be a, a bit awkward honestly. Just just have the 315 system. Plus it just feels a bit more involved considering how you have to press the buttons in real life. And the pricing is £32 for both packs, thanks to the discount they provide you. It's the same price as the Railjet, but it's better than the Railjet. Uh, honestly, I could recommend it, but the pricing is just... Mm, Noticeable, let's just say noticeable. I definitely can't say I'm in love with the pricing or the 319, but it's better than most of the crap I have to deal with, so yeah. And it's more than drivable. I think it's one of the best Armstrong Powerhouse things they've released, but I'm not jumping up and down because, well, I don't have that much of a nostalgic connection with the 319. I used to ride on them a few times back when they were in Thameslink, but yeah, that was about it, I'm afraid. In other news, our good old friends from Vulcan Productions are modifying a Class 47 to create this, the Class 57 Variant 3 and Variant 6, using the power of child object technology. It looks pretty nice, honestly, if you ask me. They've demonstrated that they can show the headlights, and they've put it in the Porterbrook livery so far, at least to the date of me recording this. I think I'll be the first person to say, um, rip Albie's reskin of the Class 57, 
2016 to 2019, it lived well. No one was going to touch with a tub for ball anymore. <laughs> oh. Sorry about that. Plus, it also means that the 57 uh, sound pack pro sounds will actually be accurate, uh, which is nice. Again, I like how it looks so far. Does anybody want to know what the best bit about having a 57 variant 3 and variant 6 is? The Pendolino Drags! Well, until the game gives up making a scenario, but, you know, the option will be there. That'll be nice. It's an incentive for them to um, add some additional liveries if they want to. Oh, uh, Vulcan Productions are also making leads to Manchester. Nice. Anyway, Blue Rail Studios are dead-ish. Well, their Facebook page has a post here saying that um, they've shut down their Discord, and uh, the way they've worded it, it also implies a website, because I have checked on their website, and basically it takes a long time to load anything. Maybe nothing will even load up or show up by next month or something. Maybe they've stop paying the domain, I don't know. But it seems that they've gone. They've up sticks and left. Ah, what a shame. Okay, let's move on. And with good timing too, since the rain has just cleared up. So what are you going to talk about today then? Well, it seems like the Train Sim New Show has competition. A challenger approaches. He goes by the name of... Oh crap, I haven't got the picture with me, hold on. Okay, when I was starting this video, he went by the name of Ken Ripstart, but I believe he's changed it again. But he has a video there called Armstrong Powerhouse Class 68 and Other Stuff. And whilst that is the title of his video, what does he call his video when he starts it up? Train Simulator News. Wow. The really funny thing about this, um, this show is inspired by Stuart K. Riley and his YouTube Poop News Show. And almost the exact same thing happened to him whilst he was making his new show. Albeit in his case, the people quote unquote imitating him were um, doing it well, they were rubbish. I don't even think they were even trying to imitate him. And in this case here, it isn't a case of imitation either. To address the little thing at the start of his video, which we're gonna look out today, no shock horror whatsoever. Unless it was just done for a joke, I really would recommend calling yourself not the Train Sim News Show, call yourself something else different. And the reason why I'm suggesting that is the same reason I'd suggest you not calling yourself Vsauce, or iDubs, or Content Cook, or H3H3 Productions. Of course, the names have kind of already been taken. And in the case of the Train Sim News Show, this has been around since 2015. So, um, yeah. But if it's just for a joke, then fair enough, you know, we just laugh it off. If you haven't guessed already, we're going to be checking out his video to see what's what. And we're not going to be mean because I actually like this video. <laughs> he gave me a good laugh the first time. But before we can watch his video, um, some random sod in the embassy recommended that I obviously play the obligatory transition. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of uh, Train Simulator News. Now aside from what I just said earlier, I just want to get this out of the way. I love this guy's accent. Seriously, I do. He's a northerner, Liverpudlian, I think he is at least. Do correct me if I'm wrong. And um, I love a northern accent. For those of you who don't know, I'm from the south of England. Like, West London, sort of. You know Hayes? Never mind. <laughs> Basically, run, run from around there. But I have absolutely no idea what my accent is. I don't even think I have an accent. I used to when I was younger, but let's not talk about that. The series that I've never announced, never talked about, and there's never been a previous episode of. But I'm just in the mood to chat some shit today. And it's going to be positive because I'm quite frankly tired of all the controversy. That's just always going on all of the time. Yep. I know I don't do political jokes too much on the show here, but I can guarantee uh, that regardless of what side you are on regarding the, the United Kingdom and its relationship with the EU, you just want all of that to stop so it stops flooding your newspapers in the morning. Be honest. I watched that. You've, you've spotted uh, me mug. Definitely a northerner. Yeah, it's the one that says. Sorry, get out the light. <laughs> Official train spotter. Yes, that would make me a uh, 
and Appendix 48, Part 2 of the Train Spotting Manual specifically dictates that as uh, soon as you officially become a train spotter, you forfeit any right to engage with the female counterpart of your species. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It was a joke. Open goal. I train spot as well. Duh. And I'm also single. But anyway, do you think I've got room to talk? Look what my mug looks like. Anyway, so what's big in the Chase Simulator community this week? Um, local black forced to run away to Argentina after finding out seven people didn't like his recent new show episode. A follow-up interview will be provided by his paper cut-out assistant on CBBC Newsground at 6 o'clock Friday night. Um, local man Alan Thompson is... Oh my goodness, that's the same... Speaking about Alan on the show, get that skipped, Poochie. In other news, Richard Powerhouse has recently released the Class 68 Enhancement Pack. Richard Powerhouse, eh? Well, that's a new nickname. Not that I'm against it, of course. I always call him Mr. Armstrong. Then again, I could probably get away with calling him Armchair Power Drill and you'd still know who I'm talking about. I've yet to buy it because I don't have a job, I'm a student. Oh, that takes me back in the day when I was a student. In the early days, I had to commute on the Class 456, the unrefurbished ones, on the Ascot to Guildford line. That's about as appropriate as using HSTs on the Sutton Loop or Class 150s on the Thameslink Core. And I spend my money on stupid shit like this. I want you. <sighs> Great to see different people like different things, eh? Maybe it's for a cosplay of a character, I don't know. Or it's for drama. Or he really is training to be a medical student in a suspiciously neat hospital outside of Brighton. <laughs> Alright, in a serious sense, because I have a feeling the deaf blind are not going to understand this whole concept of a joke, I'm 100% fine with this. Really, it doesn't bother me what he chooses to wear. And to make his case even better, I have even less room to talk about spending money on weird stuff. Isn't that right, Fidget? Now, I usually link my sources in the description, but that's one source you're not getting a link to. Go find it yourself. All the reviews say it's great. I mean, Al again, Alan Thompson. The fucking name pops up a lot. The, I the, the sounds great. It looks great. It moves great. It appears to be a great pack. But the real question is, is it fantastic? That's all right. Let's, let's read about it, shall we? <sighs> the memes. Now, the next part of the video, he's just reading off from the Armstrong Powerhouse's product page for the Class 68 in Hosman Pack. I ain't gonna show it all because, well, there's not really much to say, obviously. He does ask what a blended brake is, and I'm more than willing to answer that question for you. It's essentially a combination of a rheostatic brake and, um, an air brake. There's a Wikipedia article link in the description, um, because I'm not gonna spend the rest of this video explaining it for you. There was one bit that did make me laugh the first time I heard it. Oh, I forgot, for context. I believe the reason why he says this is um, because of the lack of scenario variety on the 68 Enhancement Pack, which is a, um, a good criticism. All the scenarios are for the wary lines, and what does Mr. Ken have to say to that? Fucking Norwich. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get enough of this guy's accent. It's the one reason I want to learn how to do a northern accent. It will make a fine addition to my accent collection, I tell you. Norwich to Great Yarmouth and Lowy Stoft. And much more. Hold on a second, I've just noticed. That's the intro theme for GTA 4. Man, this guy has a good taste in music, I tell you. I'm just going to jump ahead a bit because he's now just talking about some reskins that are irrelevant for discussion. Nothing bad, just irrelevant. Come to think of it, I'm never going to have to be part of any projects. Oh my goodness, please don't put that on again, I think I've seen quite enough. You can't finish. As always, lazy ass over here, I'm still working on my Mercy Rail roof and I'm now in the seventh build. Ah, so you're the guy who's behind that Mercy Rail route I saw. I don't think I archived any pictures of it. Mercy Rail ain't my cup of tea, but yeah, still wish you the best of luck regardless. As 
64 bit raped my last one shall we say the one that was going the most complete i could definitely definitely agree with you on that there's a glitch on train sim when editing in 64 bit where if you play signals on the game there's a chance that once you save the game can break its links and there's literally nothing you can do about it apart from replacing the track and the signal and just hoping it doesn't corrupt them again. Fun! Also, regarding to his little editing style here, I used to call that the Kadikarus editing style, but now I've seen that everywhere. I might as well just call it the default YouTube editing style. Kind of like how everybody used to be sponsored by Audible, and how everybody used to make really clickbaity thumbnails. Well, that still kind of happens. But yeah, maybe in the future there'll be a video editor that you can just place your raw footage in, and it'll instantly make every YouTube video ever. Only time will tell. Bit of another jump again because he's now just talking about a reskin that he's now um, finished because I'm slow at making these videos. Sorry. You know what? I might as well just one up it. If it's going to be like that, then we'll go for the skill shooter cut. Oh, that just came out of nowhere. Oh, can you excuse me? I just gotta go and get my daily KFC and watermelon rations. Which is odd, because I love KFC as much as anybody else, but I hate watermelon. I hate melons, let alone watermelons. Ban that sick filth. Um, I must say, it's been a, it's been a quiet week for positive stuff. Let me just a little reiterate positive stuff. It's been a quiet week. Um, so yeah, I must admit that this is the end of the video. But, but you haven't finished your mug of tea. You know you can get three weeks community service for leaving an, um, a tea unfinished up north. Yo, I really like this mug. This can become official Aces Trains merchandise. Phew. Well... Since you clearly obviously like your tea, how about you tell me what kind of tea bags you like and how many sugars you like in your tea? For me, it's PG tips and two. Yeah, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this brief what's going on in the Chainsaw World news video. Well, I for one can certainly say that I enjoyed this video, accent aside. Now, I'm going to make it as clear as possible to you. Do not just go over to him and claim that he's copying me, or he's a copycat, or he just wants to ride on my coattails or something. No, he's not. No, by talking about Train Simulator, he is not copying me. If anything, I'd like if more people were to talk about Train Simulator. Of course, be original, don't just mimic everybody else. Because if there's a good chance you don't like me, maybe you like someone else. Or maybe if you don't like him, maybe you'll like me. I don't know, it's... That's the thing about YouTube. I, for one, certainly wouldn't like to have a monopoly. Though, I would appreciate not having any copycats, as would anybody else. Even this video wasn't that bad. Just, you know, a bit of hiccups in editing here or there, honestly. But, you know, it wasn't bad. The problem which I have is the imminent potential reception, because as I've seen from comments, it feels like, not to everybody of course, but to a select few, it feels as if the messages I'm trying to broadcast are falling under deaf ears and blind eyes. I mean, thinking that I'm just one of those people who dislikes popular things because it makes me more interesting. Alright, you think that, but reality disagrees with you of course calling me close-minded despite the fact that I'm the opposite of close-mindedness in every single way, shape, or form. And of course my favourite, calling me mentally impaired because I don't like one person. Oh, isn't that cute? Well, I have a remedy for the people who are going to be making comments like these, okay? And this is not like a joke one where I'm just going to say, you know, complaint department, pick this number. No, it's a genuinely helpful bit of advice, okay? You go to Google and you type in YouTube Video Blocker and then you go to the Chrome store and you go to this little extension here and add it. Once you install that extension, put my channel name in it and voila! You'll never have to see content from me again. Now, don't misconstrue what I'm stating here. I am not saying, if you don't like my stuff, don't watch it. No, no. I'm above that. 
No, I'm saying, if you're gonna watch my stuff and make utterly stupid comments that show you can't even watch the video, or if you are watching the video, you just accidentally hit the mute button, then get lost. Maybe it's a side effect of this medication, I don't know. Frankly, I have no time for idiots. I'm sorry, but I don't. Memes, funny comments, copypastas, and messing about is one thing, but stupidity like those examples I showed you? No, just get lost. I'm sorry. That's the nicest I can be regarding that. Well, that wraps up this episode today. <sighs> I think I might do some trade spotting once I go back to the UK. Maybe Acton Bridge. Let's just look at the frequency. Oh, maybe not Acton Bridge. My apologies. Well, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I'll speak to you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>